politics now. The build-up to Tuesday's Michigan primary has seen a barrage of attack ads being launched between Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum. In an appearance in Michigan yesterday, Santorum accused Romney and Ron Paul of forming an alliance and colluding against him. It is a question I asked Paul campaign senior advisor Doug Weed when he joined us on the show over a month ago. Here's an exchange we're going to play between Ron Paul and Mitt Romney. If we want people who spent their life and their career, most of their career in Washington, we have three people on the stage. Who, well, I take that back. we got a doctor down here who spent most of his time in the, in the surgical suite. Well, not surgery, uh, the birthing suite. A lot of people interpreted that from Romney as being extremely deferential to Ron Paul. What should we make of that? Do you think he may be angling for Ron Paul's supporters eventually? I think that all of the candidates ought to. <laughs> There's no path to the White House uh, without Ron Paul. And now Doug is back. So, Doug, I ask you once again with a welcome, <laughs> is there an alliance brewing here? Well, <laughs> brewing. Well, there is no alliance. I mean, uh, Ron Paul and, and Mitt Romney are exact opposites. Maybe that's why they like each other so much. Mitt Romney is the biggest flip-flopper in modern political history. Ron Paul is the most consistent. Ann Romney <laughs> drives two Cadillacs. I don't know how she does that. Carol Paul drives a Chevy. Yeah. Now, Carol Paul would like to drive a Cadillac. And if we can reform the monetary policy the way Ron Paul wants and, and not be bailing out rich people, but let all of us have a chance maybe we'll all get to drive Cadillacs but there is no deal here's one thing that was speculated with a uh, political analyst earlier on the broadcast saying that Ron Paul's aiming for number two here he's just trying to get rid of Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich uh, no, listen, <laughs> Rick Santorum is actually leading in your poll that you just showed today. So what are we supposed to do? I mean, we have a flip-flopper on one hand. We have a fake conservative on the other. And, and Ron Paul looks at this. Uh, Rick Santorum raised the national debt five times, voted for that. Uh, Ron Paul didn't. He goes around acting like he's a social conservative, but he votes for millions of dollars for Planned Parenthood. Ron Paul didn't do that. So you've got S Santorum saying in the national debate, I voted for No Child Left Behind, but I didn't believe it was the right thing. I did it for the team. Well, his first loyalty is to the team. Ron Paul's first loyalty is to the U.S. Constitution. As Bob Dylan says, you got to serve somebody. So we don't like either one of them. We like Ron Paul. Yeah, now you make a point about Rick Santorum leading in the national polls, Doug, and indeed he does. I believe it's 31 to 30 percent right now, but the point is that a month ago or so, he was up by like 10 points. So there's certainly a trend there. Whom do you think is the toughest for Ron Paul to beat among his uh, colleagues, shall we say, in the GOP campaign? <laughs> we're in almost like a different campaign because we're in an educational as well as political campaign. You have to understand that that uh, when the, it's not which candidate it's t is tougher, it's how quickly can we get our message out to the people in time. Because once the lights go on, once they understand what's at stake, our people stick with us. When Ron Paul came to Congress, everybody was taking money from the lobbyists. It wasn't like some were and some weren't. All of them were. And Ron Paul was like this Gandhi-like creature who, who, who wouldn't take bribes, who wouldn't take money from the lobbyists, who wouldn't go on a junket because he knew it was a taxpayer-paid vacation, who wouldn't go into little rooms, pick stocks, and then decide the policy that would dictate whether those stocks go up or down. He was pure. So now he's in a presidential run, and he's trying to reform the whole system. It's not an easy task, but, but we're, we're pleased with what's happening. But, but Doug, I mean, Ron Ron Paul essentially is not campaigning in the state of Michigan, which holds its primary on Tuesday. He is running an attack ad against Rick Santorum. So my question to you is, why Rick Santorum? Why not Mitt Romney? Well, you know, if you follow the money and you'll see our ads, most of our money was spent on the three of the kind uh, ad. We had to get a Rick Santorum ad out. He was number one. Uh, and we are running in Michigan in certain districts, and we want our people in Michigan to, they know, they know what we're doing. We want them to work hard. But we're in for a marathon run. This isn't going to be over very quickly, very easy. And I can tell you this, if Ron Paul got the ring of power, he, he'd throw it in Mount Doom. It's not about glory in power for him. It's about reforming this government and bringing it back to the Constitution and opening the free marketplace again for everybody. Does Ron Paul want primetime speaking to have his policies considered at the convention in Tampa? 
<laughs> Listen, if 22 years of lobbyist money and women and appeals to his ego and let's play the game and buy stocks and then write the rules to determine whether those stocks go up, if he couldn't be corrupted by 22 years of what he's been through in Washington, then there's no promise from Mitt Romney of a speech or anything else that will make him roll over on the principles he believes. All right, Doug Weed, always good to talk with you. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. In this week's